news on the comedy front, right? News on the comedy front. If you've been following this developing story, you'll know the LA the LA comedy scene is an absolute shambles, right? People getting cancelled left and right for various sexual um indiscretions allegedly it's absolutely topsy-turvy joe joe rogan is moving uh, to texas joey diaz is going to new jersey the scene is disintegrating left and right and we don't know if it's ever going to come back to what it was prior it probably will you know all things kind of get forgiven and swept under the rug you'd hope so we have probably bigger issues um to deal with um than you know focusing on the sexual um adventures of rich and famous comedians in la you know it's a world that we probably shouldn't try to understand in any way shape or form because it's absolutely cuckoo but one of the main players in the situation or one of the main uh, characters in this whole debacle called Chris D'Elia, has announced dates of his comedy return, it looks like, which is interesting, right? Mm-hmm. Considering um, the allegations around him, considering that he hasn't necessarily addressed it, really. He kind of did when they first um, came to, s- to surface, right? He did make a statement to TMZ basically saying that, you know, he let the lifestyle get ahead of him. And he was going to take some time to reflect, I'm assuming, something along those lines. But nothing else kind of came from it, which would lead you to believe that the majority of the story was true. I think the part that he would probably argue against was the fact that he was uh, trying to groom these girls or he was, you know, intentionally going after girls who are underage. He obviously has a taste for girls who are younger, which is, you know, not a crime. I think most dudes of his level of fame would want to date somebody that is you know a few years younger than them just just for the just for the look or for other reasons right that men are interested in young girls i think that should be a shock in the same way you know certain segment of young females also interested in older dudes because they have their shit together right it is what it is but i think he was probably more upset i would imagine if i was him i'd be more upset about people thinking you're grooming girls right that you're nested you're kind of you know purposely inserting yourselves in their lives at a young and impressive age in the hopes that you could then sort of like you know manipulate them into becoming your sexual slave later on down the line you don't want that on your name and you also don't want people thinking that you're intentionally going after underage girls you know you don't want that so maybe there's nothing else to talk about in that regard right if that isn't true and he's basically proved that with the emails that he kind of put out there which basically showed for the most part most of the conversation most of the interactions were concerned central if anything like i said prior he is guilty of being a bit of a dick if you read some of the accounts right he didn't necessarily engage or (laughs) he didn't really show them a good time is that a thing to say yeah he didn't show him a good time i'd imagine (coughs) if you're a girl and you saw chris alia in your dms you'd imagine he'd be the same where he is on the podcast which is probably you know a dumb assumption to make but you know these these are young impressionable women you would probably be you know within your rights to assume oh he's going to be funny he's going to be off the cuff he's going to be charming all this sort of stuff and then when he gets there and he's just looking at his phone and he's palming off to his friend you'd be like ouch you know i'm I'm an actual i'm a uh, i'm a dignified lady um that's trying to you know accost a comedian at two something in the morning it probably doesn't make any sense but hey what do i know so he announced some new dates it looks like here on the old um what's it improv comedy theater it seems like he's got some dates out i don't know where it was it oh palm beach florida Oof, aren't the cases of covid spiking over there doesn't you know i don't know it seems like everywhere that there's a lot of cases they're also the same places that are kind of uh quick to put back shows on again which is interesting but hey there's a listing here from the uh the improv comedy theater it looks like in florida basically showing his dates he's going to be playing there on friday this friday september 18th saturday and sunday so he's doing a whole weekend there um they've got a blurb talking about all his accomplishments which you don't really need to read because you know it but interesting right interesting way to approach being cancelled um just go out there and perform right regardless it doesn't matter what people say go out there and perform and i guess in his position he might as well do that because the only thing he this is the but this is what i think this is actually the benefit and beauty about doing your own podcast if you're a successful comedian or you're on your way up is that if you if you're lucky enough to become a comedian you know professionally there and you're also then lucky enough to become one that's kind of uh accepted by the mainstream accepted by hollywood accepted by the industry which is there's not a lot of those kind of guys but if you're one of those guys i guess that slot while you're on conan where you're appearing on these other panel discussion shows where you're attending glitzy movie premieres your friends with so-and-so and whatever and they come to the comedy store and see you you also have to imagine that 
there is opportunity, there is a chance, a slight chance that as quickly as you got accepted in, is as quickly you can get booted out for any kind of indiscretion that is going to harm the collective money making capabilities of the group. Right, they're not gonna want to put up with it. They're not gonna want to risk their bag, their endorsements, their deals, um, in backing you as a friend because they're not really your friends, are they? They're just more so your kind of colleagues or your acquaintances at that particular time. So that makes that does make some sense, I'd imagine. It does make a lot of sense in that regard. So if you are coming up, you probably should try to uh, build your own platform and have your own audience kind of know what you're about on your own thing such as a podcast so that if stuff goes wrong and you get cancelled by the industry you could always run back to your actual fans um who are actually going to support you for thick and thin and i think that's what he's basically going to learn that you know he might have been booed out of netflix land but he's still going to be able to sell out various shows now of course only two dates here are actually sold out which doesn't really matter but you know these guys like to talk about how many dates are sold out is this an indication of his dwindling um appeal to people has a story really put people off i'm not too sure i still think some i still think putting a show on in florida is probably the worst place to try and sell out because you know florida has what nearly five hundred thousand cases or something absolutely insane levels right they, they they're not giving a single fuck over there so to put on a show in florida in the hopes of selling it out is a bit nuts because you're just depending on people from florida to go to your show well i'd imagine most comedians when they go on the road everyone's traveling to everywhere right you're probably you know if you live especially if you don't live in florida you're probably using it as an excuse just to go there to have a bit of a holiday get a tan and go see your, your favorite comedian so um yeah interesting that he's approach that he's made um whether or not this means he's going to do a podcast prior to him going out there that'll be interesting to kind of get the word out and sort of like you know tell everyone that he's okay and obviously maybe offer his side of the story which i'm not sure if he's doing is he actually going to sue i'm not too sure for defamation maybe not maybe he is maybe he's just trying to keep his head down because you know if we believe from what from so from what i've kind of read between the lines and listening to what joe diaz said that there was a story or there is a story being worked on like a kind of la scene takedown you know in the same vein that they did to the intellectual dark web when they were sort of popping off they were sort of like takedown hit pieces coming up all over the place and then suddenly some big one dropped and they sort of named everybody and sort of put dirt in their name and it was only you know the strongest survived in that regard so maybe the article's still coming out and he's like you know what i'm gonna get ahead of this and just do a couple shows before the actual house comes tumbling down bank some money and then keep it moving but i still think he'd be fine though chris i think if he was to just go back in his podcast and kind of explain his side of the story um maybe do it behind a paywall on patreon or something i think he'd be fairly decent i think his fans are um low enough to stick by him and maybe his issue might be that he's probably it's probably no i won't say out of character but maybe the accusations against him are so le especially if your only experience of chris has been on t fat k 10 minute podcast and that sort of stuff it's a bit hard to sort of like accept that this is how he goes on away from the camera right because i think that's why lucy k ultimately won because we knew he was a degenerate we knew he was a creep from minute zero right he's never hid that he's always told us that in his stand-up so when that stuff came out about lucy k it wasn't that much of a shock i'd imagine from to real fans of stand-up comedy right or people that were paying attention would i've known yeah this guy has been speaking about this this whole time isn't it it's not a big deal um so he didn't really lose any of his own fans he maybe lost those fans that kind of came along during his hbo days and all that glitzy hollywood stuff so that's the probably the issue he might have like crystalia like maybe realizing that oh he doesn't actually have fans he, he only has these kind of like you know um good time fans that hang around hollywood circuit i don't know but interesting to see his approach you should see that he announced dates so quickly he didn't take a year out that i would assume he would have taken he's kind of getting back on a saddle asap and you know this professional comedy i'd imagine similar to djing you probably can't take that much time off anyway so he's stuck between a rock and a hard place he probably has you know he just what well, he, he has a newborn um living in la you know they're not they're not reducing rent i've heard in la so you know let the guy go and earn his money but i'd love to hear your thoughts what do you think about crystalia announcing new dates but not really announcing anything else regarding the situation should he say anything else um do you believe he's deserving of a career which is you know a mad question to ask but i'll ask anyway i think he of course he is or if you're on the other side if he is to get cancelled how long should he be cancelled for let me know in the comments below